The moon hung high above London, its silver light casting an eerie glow over the cobbled streets. Lady Beatrice Ashworth, resplendent in her emerald gown from the Duke's Grand Gala, found herself alone outside the Grand Estate. The echoes of laughter and music still rang in her ears as she realized, with growing dismay, that all the carriages had long departed. Her gloved hands tightened around her satin shawl as she glanced up and down the empty street. The hour was late, and she had no choice but to venture through the less desirable parts of town to return home. A chill crept down her spine not just from the cold, but from the thought of the crime-ridden streets that awaited her. Just as her breath quickened in panic, the faint sound of hooves echoed in the distance. She turned, and through the fog appeared the most magnificent carriage she had ever seen. Its black lacquered frame glistened under the moonlight, and the horse's coats gleamed as though polished by starlight. The carriage door opened soundlessly, revealing a man more handsome than any she had encountered. Good evening, my lady, he said in a voice smooth as velvet. His dark hair fell in waves about his face, and his eyes, those eyes, were deep pools of mystery. It is dangerous to wander these streets alone. May I offer you safe passage home? Beatrice hesitated. There was something too perfect about him, his flawless complexion, his chiseled features, and those eyes that seemed to glimmer with an unnatural light. But as she cast another glance down the desolate street, the thought of what lay ahead swayed her decision. Thank you, sir, she replied, her voice wavering. I would be most grateful. He extended a hand, and she stepped into the carriage, the warmth inside a sharp contrast to the chill of the night. As the door shut behind her, she felt a sudden, inexplicable unease. The man took his seat across from her, his gaze never leaving her face. She attempted small talk to dispel the tension. Were you at the Duke's gala tonight? She asked, her voice a bit too bright. He smiled, a slow, knowing smile that sent a shiver through her. No, my lady. I was attending, to other matters. She swallowed hard, feeling his eyes pierce through her. She could not meet them, no matter how she tried. There was something hypnotic in the way they gleamed, as if they could reach into her very soul and twist it to his will. The carriage moved steadily through the streets, its wheels bumping gently over the cobblestones. But with every bump, Beatrice felt herself slipping deeper into his gaze. He held her in place, a silent predator stalking his prey. Look at me, he said, his voice suddenly commanding. Her breath caught in her throat. She forced herself to look into his eyes, and the world seemed to blur around her. She was trapped in his gaze, unable to move, unable to think. His smile widened as he leaned closer, his face inches from hers. You're mine now, he whispered. She felt his hand brush against her neck, and in that instant, everything went black. The next morning, Beatrice awoke in her bed. The curtains were drawn, casting the room in shadows, but even in the dim light, she could see her reflection in the mirror across from her. She looked pale, paler than she had ever been before. Her hand flew to her throat, and her fingers brushed against two small puncture marks on her neck. The events of the previous night rushed back to her, and a wave of horror washed over her. She had been turned. The man in the carriage had not just taken her home, he had taken her life. And now, she was one of them. This was her fate. This was her life now. And the moral of the tale? Never, under any circumstance, get into a stranger's carriage. Written by, Squirrel Sandwich.